So I mentioned that I was going to be telling you a little bit about who we are, correct? So as North Seal Wellmark, traditionally we have been a we have been focused on uh, selling uh, specifically valves, controls, and automation products. Now that we are part of Apergy, we're also part of a corporation that is a leading equipment and digital technology provider to the oil and gas industry. Apergy in itself ha is composed of different brands uh, that have uh, 60 years of heritage of the most trusted brands in the oil field. North Seal Wellmark, as some of you may recall that are aware of the product, uh, of the product line, was part of, um, of uh, Dover Corporation. But as of, uh, April, uh, as of May 2018, uh, Dover Energy um, moved out from Dover Corporation and separated itself into an independent publicly held company called Apergy. So we are now Apergy, unlocking energy to drive value for our customers and plug employees and shareholders. Apergy basically provides a comprehensive spectrum of innovative offerings, including artificial lift, drilling, production, and automation solutions. So I won't go into too much detail in, in terms of our history, but I will re-emphasize that at North, Seal, at North Seal Wellmark, we have a drive for innovation, our roots also extend back more than six decades, and that we are the go-to resource for upstream and midstream oil and gas applications in North America. Our mission has always been to help companies produce, store, and transport products safely and efficiently. As you can see from the timeline down here, there's some very key dates to our, to our history, but the most important thing to note is that in 2016, the Wellmark brand of uh, valves and automation joined the North Seal brand of valves and automation here in Houston, Texas. And in 2018, as of January 2018, the Wellmark brand of chemical injection pumps, along with the Timberline brand of chemical injection pumps, was incorporated under the same roof here in Houston, in Texas, under our North Seal Wellmark operating company. North Seal Wellmark is uniquely qualified to deliver engineered valve, automation, control, and now, and now chemical injection pump solutions. So just to continue a little bit uh, with more detail into our profile, we have a sales, marketing, operations, engineering, customer service, technical support, all co-located to provide excellent customer service. We are here in North America. Our main footprint is in North America with local support, with manufacturing and assembling capabilities in the USA. Now, we also have sales offices internationally, which are represented primarily through reps and distributors. And thank you all, by the way, for those that have joined the webinar uh, from uh, abroad as well. So the general capabilities for North Seal Wellmark are the fact that we have a 75,000 square foot manufacturing uh, facility with flexibility for expansion. We have a commitment for innovation with an R&D and engineering team in-house with the ability to provide customized solution and engineered solutions. We also have uh, various certifications ranging from ABS, Canadian Standard Association certification, Canadian registration numbers for select product lines, and uh, we're also ISO certified, PED certified, and ASTM and ASME compliant. In addition to that, we have a continuous commitment to operational excellence, where we follow Six Sigma design and lean manufacturing processes, and we do CNC welding, painting, assembling, and testing in-house as well. So now that you know who we are, how we fit within the corporate structure, the products that we offer, and a bit about our history. Uh, let's start off with uh, the markets that we serve in, in uh, North Seal Wellmark. Historically, we've been providing products into oil and gas, marine, and industrial applications. However, our bread and butter has really been oil and gas upstream and midstream. Within upstream, it's been primarily products around separation equipment and in midstream around compression equipment. 
We will go into further detail in terms of the products that we offer, the whole gamut of products that we offer for those applications. But really our value proposition is the fact that we have local support, we strive for competitive pricing, we strive for um, uh, short lead times and to meet those short lead times, and that we have the capability of customizing our products and that we also have a uh, well-knowledged and experienced uh, uh, technical and sales team to provide as much technical support as needed. Here's a quick snapshot of our upstream presence. Everywhere you see in blue is essentially where we provide uh, uh, products into, but primarily our uh, products in upstream are around uh, separation equipment. Within those separation applications, we have various different types of valves, various types of uh, uh, level controllers, regulators, uh, level switches, uh, dump valves, and uh, a few other accessories and products as well. On midstream, our presence is primarily around the compression equipment, which also ranges with a whole gamut of products ranging from uh, safety relief valves, suction valves, dump valves, liquid level switches, liquid level controllers, butterfly valves, pressure regulators, and so forth. So again, just to reemphasize, we have a, a comprehensive product portfolio with uh, valves ranging from globe valves to uh, safety relief valves and regulators, as well as a comprehensive portfolio in valve controls and automation for instrumentation and control and actuation. But let's start off with the, the, the main portion of our presentation. And really here, we want to focus on the chemical injection pump offering that we have within our product portfolio. Again, the two brands that we offer for chemical injection pumps are Timberline and Wellmark, all co-located under the North Seal Wellmark operating company. The products that we offer within those uh, chemical injection pump offerings range from electric to pneumatic pumps and controls. Before we do that though, let me give you a brief uh, summary of what we will cover. We have again, we will cover why we do chemical injection, why it's important, the different methods of chemical injection, the markets that we serve, and we will dive in deeper as well as to the uh, different products that we offer within electric products and pneumatic products. I won't go into too much detail in this slide either, but, but just note again that uh, as of 2017, it was decided that Timberline and Wellmark pump manufacturing would move to Houston, Texas, uh, and, it would be, and it would start its integration with the North Seal Wellmark operating company and other valve and control systems as of uh, January 2018, which is what we've been doing uh, this year. Uh, part of the reason is to make sure that we optimize and, uh, and uh, leverage some of the manufacturing capabilities that we have here in Houston to be able to continuously provide some of that uh, innovative technology and the uh, best customer service available. So let's start with the basics of chemical injection, right? What is chemical injection and why is chemical injection important? Chemical injection is the process of injecting chemicals into production fluid in order to make chemical changes. Oil and gas chemical injection is typically very reliant on repeatable low volumes at high pressures. And chemical injection is very important because it can either stimulate production for an existing well or it can protect downstream equipment from corrosive effects of the produced oil and gas. So again, why do we do chemical injection? We do it for the sake of flow assurance, for acid integrity, and also for production purposes to maintain and to improve our production. Within each of those, we have different met methods of chemical injection, which we will cover in the next following slides. To start off uh, for flow assurance, we have methanol or hydrate inhibitors. Methanol and hydrate inhibitors uh, basically allow you to uh, reduce hydrate formation. And hydrate formation is, uh, occurs when high pressure combined with sudden pressure drops results in uh, above freezing temperature. So in other words, when water molecules and natural gas freeze 
to form gas hydrates. These are the ice formations that surround the gas molecules. Hydrate formation is one of the most common issues faced in oil and gas, and that is why methanol and hydrate inhibitors are so important to the chemical injection process. The industry has started, though, to transition from methanol to ethylene glycol for a couple of reasons, for health, safety, and for the environment. Along with the uh, flow assurance uh, chemical injection methods, we have scale inhibitors. Scale inhibitors are injected when pressure and temperature changes in the pipeline affect the solubility of chemical components in water, resulting in scale formation. As you can see from the image, scale formation can be very prominent in some of these acids. So it is typically injected through capillary tubes to the tree or downhole, depending on the scaling risks. We also have a paraffin and wax inhibitors. Paraffin inhibitors prevent the position of paraffin onto pipe surfaces. Just like the other ones that we mentioned earlier, as you can see, these uh, type of formations can essentially clog up your assets and, uh, and eventually even cease uh, production altogether. So again, paraffin inhibitors or wax uh, forms when changes in temperature, pressure, and composition cause a decrease in solubility of oil, which in turn allows for the buildup of these paraffins. As much as 85% of the world's oil is prone to precipitate paraffin deposits, which over time can reduce this flow uh, to such a degree that it, it can cease production. Along with flow assurance, we also have uh, the demulsifiers or emulsion breakers, which are a class of specialty chemicals used in order to separate emulsions, for example, water and oil. They are commonly used in processing of crude oil, which is typically pr uh, produced along with significant quantities of saline water. The oil producers are specifically interested in three aspects of demulsification, one of them being the rate or the speed at which this uh, separation takes place, the other one being the amount of water left in crude oil after separation, and last but not least, the quality of this separated water for disposal. So moving on to uh, acid integrity and some of the methods for acid integrity. We have, for starters, biocides. Biocides are used to prevent the rapid reproduction of bacteria into colonies, which can cause issues in piping and process equipment. Both surface and produced water contain this bacteria. Therefore, it's very important to be able to inject biocides in order to reduce the formation of these uh, colonies, of these bacteria colonies. Many oil and gas applications also favor the use of sulfate reducing bacteria, which is the activity uh, of which can result in the production of H2S. Moving on with uh, corrosion inhibitors, which is another chemical injection method for acid for the purpose of acid integrity. Um, corrosion inhibitors work to form a layer which prevents access of the corrosive substance to the material. This is pretty straightforward. As you can see from, uh, from the picture here, uh, some of these uh, corrosion effects can be very catastrophic. So it's very important to be able to inject and to properly inject these corrosion inhibitors. Along the same lines of H2S and corrosion, we have H2S scavenger. H2S scavenger reacts with H2S to form stable water or oil, which are soluble reaction products. H2S is a colorless, as you may know, flammable and extremely hazardous gas, often described to have a rotten egg smell, and in concentrations of over 100 uh, parts per million, it is immediately dangerous to life and health. H2S is uh, capable of causing this localized severe corrosion that can induce the sudden failures that we saw from the previous image and the previous acid. Last but not least, we have uh, foamers uh, or soap sticks. Uh, these are designed to foam water in the tubing, thereby lightening the fluid column and allowing the formation of pressure to unload fluid from the well. 
one thing to note is that foamer injection is replacing uh, soap stick technology as new methods are being developed and injected down a hole through a capillary stream. The issue and the main issue with soap sticks is really that they have a limited lifespan before they completely dissolve, resulting in the process having to be repeated. And again, it just makes them less efficient. That's why foamers are, are, uh, are replacing the soap stick technology. So to summarize and cap off this section, why do we do chemical injection? We do it for the purpose of flow assurance. We do it for the purpose of asset integrity. And we also do it to maintain or to improve our production. Now that we know why we do chemical injection and uh, uh, the different methods of chemical injection, let's move on to uh, the markets that we serve here at uh, Timberline and Wellmark under North Seal Wellmark and uh, focus on also the products that we have to offer. So traditionally, uh, chemical injection uh, has been done in several different uh, applications or markets as in mining, water treatment, and upstream, uh, midstream oil and gas. But internally for the products that we offer, we focus just like we do for the valves and automation uh, equipment we focus primarily on upstream, midstream oil and gas application. Within the upstream and midstream oil and gas application, we have uh, different types of, uh, of uh, chemical injection. We have wellbore injection, we have an enhanced oil recovery or improved oil recovery injection, injection for water treatment, and injection for pipeline and gas processing in the midstream applications. Staying within the parameters of oil and gas upstream and midstream, you can see that the primary type of chemical injection is done for wellbore injection, followed by a far second for pipelines. So primarily for upstream applications. A quick fact is that about 45% of chemical, um, well, of wellbore injection is done through methanol chemical injection. Another thing to note is that pipeline injection uses uh, pumps similar to those used for wellbore injection. So what does a basic setup look like for the chemical injection process? Well, we, we start off with the chemical tank with a few bell valves, also with a pressure relief valve, along with a pump setting gauge, and finalized with a check valve and the pump and the fluid ends themselves. The, there are more, in essence, there are more, more components than just um, the pump for uh, the chemical injection process. However, here, we only focus on providing and manufacturing the pumps, along with some val uh, valves, but mainly the pumps themselves. So within the products that we offer for chemical injection, we have, uh, and as we mentioned earlier, we have electric products and pneumatic products. Within the electric products, we have uh, DC pumps, AC pumps, solar pumps, and all of these with varying levels of control. And within the pneumatic pumps, they're typically character uh, characterized by being purely mechanical, low cost products, and products that are regarded as set it and forget it type uh, equipment. Let's start off with uh, the chemical or the electric chemical injection pumps. There's a few reasons why customers select electric or solar pumps above pneumatic pumps. Typically, it boils down to uh, a few factors ranging from uh, the fact that the customer may not have a supply gas readily available, or they just simply cannot afford pneumatic, the pneumatic pump emissions. Applications uh, for solar uh, fall, uh, they're also selected when applications for solar fall within the acceptable range for solar powered injection. In addition to that, and I think more importantly, the last two, where customer needs an additional uh, level of control for the pump, and also when the customer needs an additional level of accuracy above that of the pneumatic pump. So again, for uh, constraints of having a supply gas readily available, and also for the sake of accuracy, timing, and control. 
the basic principle of a chemical injection is quite straight uh, forward in terms of the electric uh, product line. We have an electric motor mechanism which converts rotational motion to linear motion. That linear motion drives a reciprocating plunger which is connected to the fluid ends. All pumps can either have a simplex or duplex fluid end. And the type of electrical power uh, can either be alternating current or direct current, depending on what the customer has or needs. In terms of the DC pumps and some of the, the characteristics of the products that we offer, we have a, an adjustable uh, stroke length via pin adjustment, which offers three positions per head. We also have uh, three different sizes for the plungers, which are quarter inch, three eighths inch, and half inch. In addition to that, we have two general purpose uh, motors, which uh, come in two different sizes, the small one being the 30 RPM motor, and the large one being the 60 RPM motor. The packing options are either Teflon Buna or Teflon Viton. On the AC pumps, these pumps are typically for applications where you have uh, 115 VAC power uh, available. And one thing to note is that this pump is pretty much identical to the DC powered pump. The difference is that this uh, AC pump uh, has a Digimax integrated into its motor cover. And it also has a plug and play operation with a standard three prong plug. On the solar pumps, these are a little uh, same, uh, same principle, uh, same uh, type of operation, but really it is composed of three main components. The photovoltaic panels, which are just the solar panels, the battery bank, and also the pump controller. The solar panels provide the energy necessary to run the electrical pump and charge the battery bank. And the battery bank uh, is a 12 VDC deep cycle battery to store power generated by the PV panels. The pump controller consists of an electric motor with one or two fluid ends and an injection controller. In addition to that, the panels can be sized in the different options. Uh, in either 50 to 60 watt, 90 to 100 watt, or 135 to 150 watt options. As I mentioned earlier, they have a battery uh, uh, bank, and the, their, this battery bank is isolated and vented in a vented enclosure uh, with integrated controls compartment. It also uses the industry leading Sun Saver charge regulators. In addition to that, it is uh, it also comes as uh, skid mounted as an option uh, in order for you to be able to procure and source all your equipment from one, from one uh, uh, supplier and also to uh, be able to have a, a compact product offering. In terms of the controls, I won't go into too much detail, but know that there's continuous controllers and on off controllers. Some of them have, uh, uh, these are typically inexpensive and reliable products but really our bread and butter in terms of controller equipment and controls is the Digimax timer. Uh, the Digimax timer is our most advanced controller offered. It is available for both 115 VAC and 12 VDC pumps, and it, uh, but it comes standard in the 115 VAC pumps. It also has an enhanced accuracy compared to the intermittent and continuous run controllers from the previous slide, and it also allows for a desired volume to be specified in quarts per day or through a user set on off time for efficiency. In addition to that, it comes with a standard temperature sensor included, which allows for temperature based injection. It has a class one DIF2 groups A, B, C, D hazardous location uh, certification or versions available. And it also comes with a Modbus RTU uh, serial communication via RS-485. Moving on to the pneumatic pumps, we will also uh, touch base on the reasons why you would select it and some of the products that we have uh, within our offering. But know that the, that the reasons uh, for selecting a pneumatic pump are, are quite uh, straightforward. Primarily, the customer has a, a supply gas readily available. Typically, the customer is price sensitive, 
And also the customer just does not have electrical power available or is just unwilling or unable to install a sufficient PV system. Importantly, the customer must also understand and accept that there are increased emissions incurred by pneumatically actuated pumps. Last but not least, when pumping occurs in class one div one or class one div two areas, and the customer simply does not want to purchase an electrical pump rated for these type of environments. The principle of operation for pneumatic pumps is also very straightforward. You have an MPT timer which controls cycling of supply gas into the piston chamber, and you have the supply gas which actuates this uh, piston and plunger. You also have a spring which provides return stroke for the pump. And finally, the gas is exhausted back through that MPT timer. One uh, uh, key fact to take away is that the ratio of piston area versus plunger area provides a high discharge pressure with a relatively low supply gas pressure. In terms of the products that we have within the pneumatic pumps offerings, we have the 2515 and the 2522. These are typically uh, economical pumps with single seal spring return um, uh, standards with uh, pressure ratings of up to 4,500 PSI for the 2515 and flow rates of up to 21 gallons per day. The 2522 has pressure ratings of up to 10,500 PSI with flow rates of up to 15 gallons per day. These are both recommended for use with methanol and they come with an ultra high molecular weight polyethanol seal with the Buna O-rings as well. It is important to choose the correct soft goods in order to provide the right combination of cost and chemical resistance. So make sure you're choosing your, right, uh, your correct soft goods. We also have the Series 5030, which as well as the previous ones is a single seal spring return, but this one has uh, pressures of up to 4,500 PSI but with much higher flow rates of up to 61 gallons per day. This uh, model or series is also recommended for use with methanol, and it also comes with an ultra high molecular uh, weight polyethanol seal. So here's the whole gamut of uh, models that we have uh, within the pneumatic pump line, just as well as we uh, offer different products and models within our electric and solar pump line, as well as with our um, uh, valves, automation, and control products, we have a uh, wide array of product offerings, and uh, we strive to make sure that these offerings are as uh, cutting edge as possible, as safe as possible, and as reliable as possible in order to allow you to do what you need to do. So with that said, knowing now that who we are as a company, um, what products we offer within valves, automation, controls, and chemical injection pumps. For me, it is very important for you to take away, if anything at all, from this presentation, the reasons why Norseal uh, Wellmark is the company that it is. And uh, it really comes down to a few aspects and few details. We strive and we focus to provide high quality products with uh, proven designs in the field. We work uh, pre and post sale uh, with our customers to provide quick response times. And we also work hard to provide and to meet the competitive lead times that are required in the market. In addition to that, we have a uh, very well um, uh, equipped technically, uh, technical uh, team as well as a, a sales team to provide a continuous training and customer support. And what does this mean to the customer? Well, this means lower total cost of ownership uh, through high uh, quality products, maximized uptime resulting in more production uh, because of the quick uh, response uh, that we offer, availability of the products to minimize downtime because of those uh, competitive lead times, and it ultimately allowing you to minimize your costs by allowing you to focus on your core business while allowing us to focus on our core business, which is to provide quality products safely, efficiently, 
and quickly. And this all equates to more profitable growth for our customers. With that said, I'd like to end this uh, webinar thanking you all for the time, um, uh, for listening, and also uh, thanking you for, uh, for allowing us to share some of our history, some of our products, and some of our technologies. We will be fielding some of the, some of the questions uh, uh, now with, um, along with uh, Jeff Case, which again, he's our uh, chemical injection pump expert and lead engineer. And uh, with that said, uh, don't forget to visit our NorSealWellmark.com website. If you have any questions that we haven't been able to answer in this presentation, also email us at nrs underscore info at apergy.com. And give me one quick second while I open up the Q&A section as well as the chat section so that we don't miss any questions that might have been asked. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Jeff Case. I know Daniel kind of gave a gave me a brief intro earlier, but just a little bit of background to myself. Uh, I've been with Timberline or the chemical injection side uh, for about eight years now. I started at Timberline. Uh, we got acquired by Dover. We've recently moved to Apogee. Been with them ever since. Uh, so we've got a few questions, uh, and I'll go ahead and start with some of the easier ones that you guys have asked. Uh, one thing that Daniel really didn't cover on. Uh, on the solar electric side, but what's covered in the electric and the pneumatic side is the pressures and rates of uh, solar electric pumps. Uh, just to give you guys kind of an idea of where we live in chemical injection, it's going to be we're typically in around the 10 gallons per day type flow rates at up to 6,000 psi, or we can get flow rates up to about 15, uh, 150 gallons per day at 1,500 psi. Uh, so by uh, typically low flow, we're typically talking between 10 gallons a day to 150 gallons a day, but it really depends on uh, uh, what your injection pressures are. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Sorry about that. Uh, another question we had, I guess, was about chemical compatibility and uh, I guess choosing the right pump based on the chemicals that Daniel talked about. So. Uh, what we've typically done in the past is we've uh, requested that if we can, we get an MSDS from the customers. Uh, so if we have an MSDS, typically that lists the hazardous chemicals. And what we'll do is we'll actually look at each one of those and we'll come up with uh, our best recommendation as far as packing uh, and seals go. Um, in the same vein, uh, another question about solar sizing. Uh, there's also no one size fits all for that on solar pumps. Uh, so what we typically do is we look at where you're located uh, to get an idea of how much sunlight you're going to get and also the pressure and flow rate. And from there, it's fairly simple for us to calculate, I guess, which pump would be best for your application and also give you a recommendation on number of panels, size of panels, as well as the battery. Um, looking through some of these questions that have come through. Uh, one question about automation and the Digimax controller. Uh, so. Like Daniel said, we've become part of Apergy, uh, or since the Apergy transition, we've been moved into a group, Apergy Digital, uh, which we do have a focus on automation as uh, being part of Apergy Digital. So it's definitely uh, on our radar, So we'll start looking into those. Uh, what we do have now is with our Digimax controller, uh, we have Modbus RTU communication via 4S, uh, RS-485. And what that allows you to do, you can set rates remotely, uh, you can monitor the pump, cycles. Uh, you can set variables uh, such as temperature settings, uh, what's plunger size. You can basically do anything remotely uh, if you have access to it or if you can connect it into your existing SCADA system. Uh, so that's uh, mainly the technical questions that we've had. Uh, we did have one question about on-site trainings. Uh, that's something that we can discuss after the presentation. Uh, that's going to depend really on where you're located, and uh, we do have some direct storefronts. We do some through distributors, uh, so we can discuss that in more detail after. Uh, we'll be reaching out to you. Uh, another question. Uh, so I believe that this presentation will be available afterwards uh, for download. I can see. That is correct. Uh, the document itself, uh, as well as the uh, 
the webinar uh, portion, the voice portion, where it will have the voice over and the uh, presentation. Okay, another question about stocking locations or is everything shipped from Houston? So we do have uh, multiple storefronts as well as distributors all around the country, Canada, uh, Columbia, Middle East, uh, OKC. So uh, yeah, so all of our storefronts, uh, we're primarily located direct is gonna be in the Eagleford. Uh, we do have a storefront in Midland, uh, one in Oklahoma City and one in Carlsbad, New Mexico. Uh, but like I said, we have distributors pretty much everywhere else that we aren't direct. It looks like in the chat, uh, they're also talking, uh, we have some reps for North Seal Wellmark also from Mexico, uh, listing their contact information. Thank you. Anything else you want to finish Nothing with? Nothing else. Uh, in the presentation, um, you can send us uh, an email, you can visit our website, you can give us a call. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out at any point in time and we'll uh, do our best to uh, clarify any questions that might have been uh, left over or, or unanswered. And they'll also uh, be able to provide you more information about uh, uh, the products that we discussed today during the presentation itself. Again, thank you very much.